It says that when the Jewish people left Egypt, together we sang a song. And it says that when there will be peace in the world, we'll all sing together a song. So melody and harmony is beyond conversation. It's something that connects us to other spheres of reality. Funding for Music Voyager provided in part by... Live concerts are my passion. Now I can enjoy them over and over again. Additional funding provided in part by the Israel Ministry of Tourism and the Israel Ministry of Foreign Affairs. My name is Jacob Edgar. I'm an explorer, but I don't search for lost cities or ancient ruins. I'm on the quest for a different kind of treasure, music. As an ethnomusicologist and world music record producer, I travel the globe hunting for the best songs the world has to offer. And I suffer through some of the worst. So you don't have to. I've got a backstage pass to the world's music, and I won't stop until I've heard it all. Mention Israel to most people, and the first thing that comes to mind is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Israel is in the news a lot, and usually the news isn't very good. It's a tense region of the world, which all too often erupts into violence. And with polarized opinions and power struggles, it's very hard for anyone to find common ground. But if you look beyond the headlines and take the opportunity to hit the streets and meet people face to face, you'll find an enchanting multicultural country overflowing with incredible natural beauty and a complex and creative society. I'm in Tel Aviv, Israel's biggest city, and I'm going to be meeting up with Idan Reichel. Now, Idan is a huge name in Israel, but he's not your typical pop star. He brings in a number of multicultural influences into his sound, including Ethiopian flavors, Middle Eastern flavors, a bit of Yemenite music, and he mixes it all together into this incredibly accessible and beautiful sound. I'm going to be exploring Tel Aviv with Idan, and then heading south to Eilat on the Red Sea for the Faza Morgana Festival, where Idan and his Idan Reichel project will be performing in a very magical location. It's going to be an incredible trip, and I'm sure there's going to be some amazing music along the way. In 2002, the Idan Reichel Project, a collective of musicians of diverse backgrounds, ages, and religions, released its first album, and the impact was immediate. Since then, the Idan Reichel Project has released a string of hits, making a household name out of its dreadlocked founder and leading the band to international success as well. This 
In a region that seems indelibly marked by religious and cultural strife, the Idan Reichel project promotes the concept that through artistic collaboration, people from all walks of life can find common ground. For some insight into the Israeli music scene, I sat down with Doobie Lentz, a respected journalist and radio host who has his finger firmly on the country's musical pulse. Israeli music is like a melting pot. Put it uh, on the fire and really low fire, and every day comes somebody and brings into it some ingredients from home or some herbs. And when you taste it in the evening, it's, it's different from the night before. Every day is something new, always in the process of, of experiments. The story is that this guy who is First of all, very, very talented and very curious yeah. about people. And he know how to translate his curiosity to wonderful melodies and to amazing lyrics. And he knows how to, to pick the right people. Speaking to people gives him the, the idea about listening to the music. I've known Idan for many years, and I've been wanting to bring the show to this part of the world for some time now. Music Voyager finally had the perfect excuse when Idan invited us to be his special guests at a concert that was to take place in the Israeli desert. We planned a journey with Idan from Tel Aviv, pass by the Dead Sea, then cross the Negev Desert as we make our way south to Elat, a resort on the Red Sea bordered by Jordan and Egypt. It's a great opportunity to learn a bit more about Idan and what lies behind the man and his music. I don't practice Judaism or I don't practice any religion, but I think that a song like Bowie or, or a song that, that is make a big effect, I believe that I'm like a tool, you can call it a spiritual something. It's just using you as a tool to deliver it. There is a level of song become a hit. And then, you know, it can last for many years. But the most supreme form of music for me are the folk songs. Because the folk songs are something that it's beyond hits, beyond time, beyond, beyond even classical music. And I think that a song like Let It Be, there is a good chance that 800 years from now, no one will know who were the Beatles or John Lennon, but kids in churches will sing Let It Be. It's funny because as we're standing here, I'm just going to describe the scene. <laughs> we're standing here and this crowd is slowly building around us smiling faces. I see all these people smiling. <laughs> Nobody ever smiles like this when I'm around, you know? But I see everybody's like, hey, it's, hey, it's Idan Reichel. It's and here they come. <laughs> Crazy, we better get out of here. We better split. <laughs> No city has played as important a role in the history of religion than Jerusalem. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all consider it to be among their most sacred sites, and you can practically feel the energy of thousands of years of human spirituality as you walk in front of the Western Wall and the Temple Mount. <laughs> Idan asked me to come to Jerusalem so I could visit the home of his good friends, Pamela and Abba Clayman. It's a beautiful home with patios overlooking Jerusalem's old city. Every stone has a melody in this city. Jerusalem is the city of hope. It's the city of dreams, the city of vision, the city of tears, the city of prayer, the city of peace. Very nice. And the city of hospitality. <laughs> Oh, 
Don takes me to one of Israel's most popular tourist attractions, and with good reason. The Dead Sea is truly magnificent, and it attracts visitors from around the world who come to bathe in its supposedly healing waters. Almost 10 times saltier than the ocean, bathers float like corks in the dense water, which of course makes it the perfect place to film an interview. I don't think a lot of people realize how diverse Israel is because it's a country of immigrants, really. Right. For those of the viewers who are not familiar with Israel, you know, and as I said, in every block you can find people who lived here for seven generations or people that just moved here from hardcore villages of Ethiopia and they didn't know what electricity is and then their neighbor is a classical violin player from Moscow. We don't have here in, in, in Israel Little Italy or Chinatown or it's not oh, yeah? sections, it's just, uh, it's all That's mixed. Cool. I feel that more people from different places in Israel can feel connected to that night, I get together with Idan for a taste of traditional Israeli food. Even though this dish is being prepared by one of Israel's top chefs in a high-end resort restaurant, the chef assures me this is just the way his mama used to make it. Until today, I don't think that you can define an Israeli di dish or an Israeli kitchen. I think it's, it's all about the mix. Oh, yeah? Mix from, from all over. I mean, people will say to you, falafel is right. very Israeli, and hummus, and yeah. kina. But actually, you can find great falafel in Egypt. Right, of and course, And also, of course. great hummus in Lebanon, I'm sure. Yeah. And you know, in music, as I told you, that I think that the supreme form is, is folk. Yeah. music. Mm -hmm. I think also, you know, at the end of the day, he is a chef and he learned all over the world. But when he needs to pick a dish to make us, it's somewhere, you know, from East Jerusalem that he grew that he up. he grew up eating, his mother eating, made it. You know, yeah. he said, this is the best thing. You know? yeah. It can be, you know, a very simple, very simple dish that it's just, it's like simple music. Well, all right. How do you say what? L'chaim? L'chaim. L'chaim. Thank you. After our meal, Idan sits down by the piano to demonstrate how he puts together his music. There is no um, recipe for uh, writing something, uh, writing a song. It's the soundtrack of the people's life. It's the, uh, it's like the bread and the sugar for this for the chef. So folk music is for the culture, for, for the nation. It's the soundtrack of, of a nation. I think the most famous melody of the Down Hill Project is Bowie. Is Bowie. Bowie, right, which was and your first big hit, yeah. Yeah, and it's also started from this kind of groove. Really, it's hard to imagine. So show me how you went from that into Bowie. It's a very, very, very hora kind of melody. <laughs> If you slow it down, it's like... I'm 
standing at the entrance of Timna Park, where the Idan Reichel project is going to be performing this evening. And before I've even entered, I'm really struck by the setting. You have the mountains of Timna over here. Down there, you've got the Red Sea. And right across the road, so close you could practically touch it, are the incredible mountains of Jordan. This barren, otherworldly setting is the site of the biannual Israel Faza Morgana Festival, which for four nights in September treats people to exceptional live music and dance in one of the most unique and impressive performance settings I've ever seen. As the sun begins to set, the 25 musicians who will be appearing on stage work through their sound check. The members of the Idan Reichel project reflect Israel's diversity. With a large immigrant population, Israel's cultural heritage can be found in various parts of the world where Jewish people have lived over the centuries. One of the lead singers in the Idan Reichel project is Ravid Kahalani, who is of Yemenite heritage. Ravid lives in Tel Aviv and fronts another band that is starting to make waves on the international music scene, Yemen Blues. It's a mashup that reflects the multitude of flavors to be found in the Israeli music scene and the young, open-minded musicians that are driving it forward. When I was in Tel Aviv, before making the trip down to Elat, Ravid invited me to meet him for a taste of Yemenite food, music, dance, and craft. Members of Yemen Blues set up in the Yemenite art gallery and workshop of famed silversmith Ben Zion David, whose family has been making handcrafted Yemenite jewelry for eight generations. He's an amazing artist, Yemenite artist. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love stuff. the wrist and uh, I love the guys here. So, and it's a cool space. So I love the atmosphere here. It's, it's like... It's like a second home almost, or yeah. like a family. The, the magic and the, and the amazing thing that happened with Yemen Blues, that we brought some kind of a, a, a fresh sound because it was like so natural, because we didn't come to work on, uh, you know, let's combine uh, Yemenite, with, uh, Yemenite music with uh, uh, African or jazz with uh, Yemenite or blues. With, we didn't think about it like this. We just, we, we were there, we were playing the music, we were feeling it, and everyone brought himself and, and his influence. Since I'm uh, very young, uh, my father was very strict with us that we're gonna learn how to sing the Yemenite, uh, the Yemenite uh, songs. 50% of my, my own uh, uh, singing technique is from there. It's because I was singing when I was very young. The traditional so, Yemenite yeah, material. So, so this, huh. is, uh, this is like a um, traditional song. Uh, So this is like, it's this is like cool. a traditional. Takes me to another place. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. Like... But then I started to hear, I started to listen to blues. You know, I started yeah. to listen to blues, to funk, and it's incredible. And, and I loved, it. I loved the sound. <laughs> Two other singers in the Idan Reichel project are of Ethiopian background, part of the community of nearly 100,000 Ethiopian Jews that now call Israel home. Through their work in the project, Avi Wasa and Kabra Kasai have helped bring broader acceptance to a community that hasn't always had the easiest time being integrated into Israeli society. Kabra Kasai was born in a refugee camp in Sudan 
as her parents were making the difficult journey to Israel. But she's risen from her humble beginnings to become a star in her own right. So as I told you, it's like Elant, it's, we're in a desert. So usually when we perform, we are, you know, in theaters and like big halls, everything is fancy. Right, I've seen and you in those types yes, of settings many, many, many times. Yes, and here, there's nothing. What we have is nature. It's in the middle of nowhere. The desert, the beauty of nature, it's so beautiful. It's very nice as an artist, you know, to explore yourself everywhere. But when we're at home, it's like there's a connection. It's very nice.